Yo, what's up? This is a Kia Soul 27 kilowatt hour from 2015. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you hook up uh, OBD tool or something similar like scan my Tesla or Leaf Spy or something. In this case, it's going to be a car scanner, but uh, I will show you in this car and then it's very, pretty generic for most cars, except for Tesla. I have a separate video about that one, but uh, yeah, let's get cracking. And this is the OBD adapter I use. It's called OBD Link LX. It works only for Android. There's also an uh, iPhone version of it, iOS version. Let's see. Oh yeah, here's the model in case you want to uh, Google it or find it on Amazon. So I've been super happy with this. I've been using it for many, many years for, in all different cars. Uh, so yeah, now we're going to plug it in. So I'll show you. Here is normally on most cars, there is, you can find the OBD port somewhere under here or in this case usually a lid you see and it's it's mounted like this on the side many cars you have to just feel it or poke under here and you will usually find the OBD port so that you have to put it around here normally not by the pedal somewhere around here usually in this case you put it here and then okay huh, some people uh, this this becomes like a disco light. It depends what kind of adapter you use. Some people just tape over it. <laughs> so it also has a button here for um, resetting and initiating um, pairing. And this is the phone holder I prefer to use. Mounted on the front windscreen. It has powerful suction cup. And it stays there. So it's from Biltema. Uh, well, it's in Norway. But uh, yeah. I don't like those type that you put here or something, but this one is very generic and it works in every car I drive. And I've been lately been using lots of these OBD tools because then you have w way better information than what you can see in the screen here. And then I just have a dedicated phone for it. It's just some Huawei, uh, what is it called again? I don't know really, but it's their model number here. It's not too relevant, but uh, I just use a, an Android phone for running the whole thing and usually what I do is I just mount it here like this okay let me just put it in there and then it stays there in the front windscreen and then I have the cable over to the USB and I, again this is kind of clumsy but for me it's more I mean I'm driving so many cars I have it just temporary but even in a Tesla I just find a way to tuck the cable away like this so it, so it's, it doesn't cover the instrument cluster or get in the way here. And now we're going to fire up car scanner. So you see, I can show you that we have many different apps here. Uh, let me adjust it for you. You see, car scanner works for many cars. Kanse is for um, Zoe. EV Notify at least works for ID3, ID4, and actually many other cars also. I don't like the uh, looks of the, the layout on it, could it be better. Scan my Tesla is for um, Teslas, Model S, X, and 3, and I guess Y. Leaf Spy is for Leaf only. Can Ionic is uh, actually only for Ionic. And, uh, well, they made a Can, uh, was it again for IME? I wasn't, was, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, Electrified is for i3, and then, yeah, all these other. So, I actually have pretty uh, lots of apps, but today I will show you Car Scanner, which actually seems to work for most cars. Right, so let's see now. I should mention, by the way, that uh, Car Scanner, the dude who made Car Scanner, he knows my videos, he's contacted me, uh, and I can ask him also to make a configuration file for new cars or other cars that uh, comes out or is existing that it doesn't. Yeah, so that's good. Also, I'm not sure if the Leaf Spy guy knows me. At least also Scan my Tesla guy. Yes, he, we have good contact. He can also I can also suggest new uh, new changes or whatever. And also the same with the EV Notify guy. I'm not sure about the electric. Uh, I think it was electric. It was actually, most people who made these apps they know me. Anyway, uh, let's go to Car Scanner. So you see, this is what it looks like. So what, the first thing you have to do is to go to configuration here and then connection. And you see that I have uh, paired the Bluetooth, the, the LX device here. So you have to go to the Bluetooth settings and pair it. At least for this one, this adapter, you have to hold on the button and then you can connect it. So I'm not going to go through that one. You should know how to do it. Uh, and then in here, my cars, this is where I chose. No, I don't have but wrong one. There's so many settings here. Uh, it was under connection. My bad, my bad. 
here also choose which type and then yes this is one connection profile so i have chosen kia i can show you that for example if you go for um uh, hyundai at least i've used it for the hyundai. hyundai and you scroll down a little bit kona should be here I, yeah there you see kona ev is here but we're not going to use it uh, i remember that actually for for the latest ionic the newest ionic i had to use the kona profile and then if i remember correctly it worked because the ionic yeah i think they haven't added the latest ionic here uh, so okay anyway so we have now configured what do we just go back well I, I i should show you maybe maybe yeah i should show you kia if you go here you see we have chosen the 27 kilowatt hour version you also have the 30 kilowatt hour version i don't know what the obd2 plus ev is i just chose the pure ev uh wait, maybe it yeah it could be the plug-in hybrids because these also exist in the fossil versions and then you see we have the 64 kilowatts doing the uh, soul and then i guess nero is also further up if you want to or you can just use the yeah you see nero we also have the neo profile here but we will we have chosen um soul and then we go once you have set it up then you go back here to the main screen and then you connect it and then you wait a little bit and then if everything works as uh, planned then we should uh, have the yeah you see now down here it says connected connected now we are connected and then you can go here to all sensors but this is quite messy you can see all the variables in all the sensors here that at least has been configured for this car i noticed that there are some sensors missing like outside temperature inside temperature that i had in the newer uh, soul so uh, well lots of lots of uh, voltage here you see um air bag was this oh, okay i'm just looking through available i'm not, okay well is this actually true oh maybe this one works available discharge power huh, and available charge power now you see this uh, is um it's supposed to be able to charge at 61 kilowatt maybe it means region power because it can only take around 50 kilowatt if i remember correctly maybe i should try it and see if this magically can take more more than 125 amp on the Chalamo plug because i know that the, the 30 kilowatt hour version can supposedly take 100 kilowatts so we have to test that eventually but yeah well 100 kilowatt um the voltage is not that high so it means uh, more like leaf 72 kilowatt uh, we don't have more than 200 amp over here and here we see the battery temperature all the modules uh here we actually see oh ooh, wow okay <laughs> i actually never seen through this you see that it has been uh, this what, what is yeah so 17 uh, what amp hour oh, okay energy yeah, okay kilowatt hours so, yeah you can see how much kilowatt hours been uh, charged and discharged but i don't think it's split between ac and dc like uh, tesla scanner tesla does so here we have uh, inverter oh, okay wow <laughs> so much uh, so many variables here maximum deterioration whoa is that a way to try to estimate degradation hmm interesting because i did measure around uh, i was guessing around 20 percent degradation for the video yesterday and this car tries to estimate 19 that seems plausible uh or huh, minimum oh, okay there's a maximum minimum detour okay interesting 15 to 19 percent degradation according to this uh, this app operating time oh wow okay i've been uh, working hard you see here is the chart but you see that these variables i'm um, just looking through so you can see all the variables that uh, has been coded or configured for this car uh, yes, I, yeah, okay these you see the tire pressure and whatever okay it might be because we are stationary once we start driving uh, the sensor will give information so i haven't tried that one yet um you see some some variables they don't have any values so lots of lots of cool information here uh but uh, are we done yet are we done i'm just gonna sc quickly scroll through okay but this is not very useful to have there when you're driving so what you want to do is that you you go to dashboard okay there's some i don't know what live data is but I, I go to dashboard and i made a nice looking dashboard and you might be thinking oh wow you also want that well it takes a little bit of configuration to get there there where i am so i'm not sure if maybe i can save this configuration file and you can use it or not but let's see um can you can you do something like that or uh backup oh wait a minute create backup oh okay okay I i'll see what i can do let me see 
create backup import include uh, no we're not gonna include the save just just um, just the configuration it means a set bs file huh okay well how do i okay i have to figure out if uh, maybe it will be easier for you guys to set it up or you can just do it manually i'm going to show you now so um first i don't remember how it was in the beginning but uh, you have to go here and you have to customize page and then you have to choose layout uh how was this again tap on template to choose. yeah yeah so you have different layouts I guess you, at, at your I mean, your own taste, maybe you want the speedometer or whatever to be in the in center. Let's say state of charge to be the most important one. I'm not sure how you want it, but anyway, I went for this layout, so th uh, three by four, and then I already chosen some sensors. But uh, let's see if we want to choose one new sensor here, and then you have to wait a little bit and. <clears throat> Here you can choose which sensor you want. Uh, there was something I wanted to see. What was that again? Uh, well, what the, oh yeah, it was a, there was the max discharge. Ooh, you see, there's so many val values here. But uh, let's say mi minimum deterioration. Okay, and then you go back. It's kind of clumsy the way you configure it, but uh, you you normally have to set it up only once. What, what, what? I think it's close to the there. Okay, the screen recording stop button. <clears throat> so you see now we have. We have it here, the minimum deterioration, and then you can move it up and down. Uh, very clumsy though, because I always misclick when I move it. And then when you try to click on it, you get, you enter that one. But at least it works, it's, like I said, it's clumsy to do it the first time, but once you set it up, then you normally don't have to move anything. Um, I wanna show you, okay, and the, another thing is that when you go, we have to go here in the settings, and then, you have to set background and border. See, I set it to to black and the border, and I also set the the text. Uh, you have the okay. We have view here various uh, gauge indicator. You can have it like this, yeah, if you feel like it, or you can have it like a line that goes, you know, up and down. Uh, so many different. Oh, I actually never tried all this, but I just have it on the on the regular one, so it's not too destructive. And then you can also here test text size and color. This is where see, I put the lime green one. It looks. I'm from the 80s, you know. I'm an 80s kid. And you you set everything here really. And then and then it becomes something like this. Yeah. Wait. Okay. And, uh, okay. There we go. And then it becomes up like this. So, oh, medium, huh, okay, yeah, interesting. I see all these values. So you can always uh, tune it to for your own taste. But um, this is okay. It sounds super complicated now with this app, but it's. I think it's a pretty good app, and it's free. If it, I mean, I paid for it. If you don't pay for it, you get uh, you get some ad down here which is kind of distracting if you drive it at night. So it's, I don't remember what the price is, but usually these apps are not very expensive. So, oh, oh shit, where the, what happened now? Oh, it's a, huh. yeah, yeah, you can have two, uh, two dashboards. So the other one is defaulting to this. <laughs> well, the RPM or the motor, maybe. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, but uh, what I want to say is that this app it seems a little bit complicated to set up, but uh, for me, at least, and for you also, once you set it up, no problem. And then I can also re I reuse the label, I reuse the, the layout between other cars, but uh, I have to set up the sensor and I have to set up the, the car, that's it. But for me, it's quite nice because this one, sh at least it allows you to configure it uh, more, more than many other apps, like uh, LeapSpy has a fixed configuration. Most, actually most OBD tools, they have a fixed layout. And this one allows you to change it and also choose lots of sensors. Uh, so it's nice. Uh, all the other apps I mentioned, uh, most of them, it's like you just connect it and you, you configure it and then you have whatever layout and that's it. So I'm probably not going to walk through the other layouts, but uh, you get the idea. And then I should mention that what is the, what, what is the point of having this kind of app in here? In the car, I mean, you can just look in the car's display. It shows you how many kilometers of range you have, how many percent you have. Well, some cars don't show your percentage, so that's why it's nice to have it here. And you probably also see that the state of charge. You see that in the display, it's 96%, but 
in the BMS it's actually 91 percent so it's nice to know that some cars they are hiding some degradation so when you think you're charging the 100 percent it's actually only 95 percent so it's a little bit of peace of mind or if you charge yeah you know um and then um, you also have this this uh, battery power here which is um, how many kilowatt is it pulling or charging at or regening and this is actually one of the most important one of the very useful features is that many cars they also don't show you charging speed like let's say uh, the i3 for example but you can see it here. also this car doesn't show you charging speeds pretty old so this is super useful when you're charging and you see oh you're getting 46 kilowatts mm, nice and then also well voltage is usually not too important and current but this one auxiliary battery voltage is also very useful because you can see how low the 12 volt is and so like sometimes i had the car powered on but i didn't notice the the icon for battery being i mean the 12 volt being discharged and i noticed that oh it was at 12 volt the 12.2 volt oh shit, i better power down the car so i don't run the 12 volt too low and then these ones are the super useful that many uh, many of these obd tools uh, provide is the battery temperature because almost every i mean i would say that no car displays battery temperature except for leaf shows you in a very inaccurate scale you really don't know how much it is. they could almost say the battery is cold hot or mid mid <laughs> and then but Taycan is the only car that shows you battery temperature in uh, in uh, Celsius, you know, with one integer position. But that's it, I think. Oh yeah, also the the, the sister uh, e-tron GT doesn't show you battery temperature. And uh, very important to know battery temperature. Well, it's not very important for daily use. You don't care, but especially we us in winter here in Norway or the Vikings, we want to know why the car is charging slow. And by seeing this one, you see okay, the battery is cold. Yes, it, once you if you are more advanced user, you want to know how hot or cold the battery is, and that's probably so. If it, there's a correlation, usually a correlation between state of charge, battery power, and battery temperature. So if you have low state of charge you should supposed to get fast charging but you see here that you're charging slow and then you see that all the batteries at five degrees celsius well that's why you know uh, by the way i should also mention that even for taikan taikan only shows you battery temperature only shows you well minimum temperature okay but only shows you the the average or something but uh, oh this is min and max yeah uh, but uh, the taikan does not show you inlet inlet is very useful because if the inlet is higher than the cells it means that it's trying to heat up the battery and then if the inlet is lower it means that it's trying to cool down the battery so again this is for advanced users only normal users you can just drive the car almost like a fossil car and you don't have to care about this because when once i show you something advanced like this all the haters be like oh man evs are so complicated well did you know that this app comes from fossil world it has lots and lots of configuration for fossil world so it does that mean that fossil cars are even more complicated because you can see the rpm you can see whatever in there hmm? yeah but anyway now you have gotten a pretty good uh, intro and also some explanation what what why you should have one of these if you're an advanced user so i think that's going to be it for now i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later